He's likely to appeal, right? Will this stand? Um, he's going to appeal it. There's no question about it. But it is going to stand. This is a very detailed opinion that goes through all of the evidence on each of the defendants. It's not only just Donald Trump, his two sons, but it's also um, Alan Weisselberg. Uh, it's also this other fellow, McConaughey, who was involved with the Trump organization. They've all been basically found liable. They've all been fined. They've all been enjoined. Uh, and it goes in such minute detail into each of the various items that are at issue here. And it's well over 100 pages. Um, this is going to go up for appeal, as most cases normally do, but there is no way they are ever going to get this reversed. Wow. Uh, this is quite a read uh, here. Uh, to your point, about 100 pages, uh, Mr. Ackerman, the section refusal to admit error uh, stands out here. The English poet Alexander Pope first declared, I read, to err is human, to forgive is divine. Defendants apparently are of a different mind. Their complete lack of contrition and remorse borders on pathological. Is this typical language? Uh, I wouldn't say like this? Typical, typical language, but then again, these are not typical defendants. Uh, and it's very relevant in terms of the judge deciding uh, that there needs to be an injunction in place to keep them from doing what they don't realize is wrong, uh, and also to put in place a monitor and keep in place uh, Barbara Jones, who has been overseeing the company for the last year. So there's a reason why he came to that conclusion. It's in order to justify the other remedies uh, that he has issued in this opinion. It's pretty incredible when you start tallying things up, Nick, considering this is one civil case we're talking about with hundreds of millions of dollars that he may have to play, of course, pay depending on how the appeal shakes out. There's the more than $80 million he was told to pay E. Jean Carroll in damages in her defamation case. You add attorney fees on top of that, and we have not even gotten to the criminal trials yet, but we will soon, March 25th, in the state That's of New right. York. The date yeah. in the Alvin Bragg case has now been set. And uh, how do you... What does the legal defense do between now and then, hoping for a better outcome than he has seen in these civil cases? Take a guilty plea. I just don't see how he's going to get anywhere in this Alan Bragg case. Uh, we are looking at a case uh, that's actually a very serious case. It involves election interference in 2016, uh, where Donald Trump engaged in a scheme uh, with his lawyer, um, Michael Cohen and another individual, David Pecker, the owner of the Inqu National Enquirer, to basically keep information away from the voting public. If any of this information about Stormy Daniels or Karen McDougal had ever come out prior to the election, on top of what had already come out with respect to the Access Hollywood tape and the other numerous women that have come forward to claim abuse, I don't think he would have won. And so this case is extremely important, and it's very strong. I mean, from a prosecutor's standpoint, you've got two cooperating witnesses. Uh, you've got uh, Michael Cohen, and you've got David Pecker. They're both going to support each other. You've got a tape recording with Donald Trump talking to Michael Cohen about what they're going to do in terms of making these payments. Uh, and then you've got a lot of other ancillary witnesses who are going to corroborate all of this evidence. I mean... From a prosecutor standpoint, if someone handed me this case, it's a certain conviction. So he's not looking at a pretty picture going forward. Kaylee reminds us how many cases we're actually talking about here. Uh, Mr. Ackerman, a remarkable statistic uh, from USA Today's ongoing review of Donald Trump's history with litigation. This is in incredible to me. The paper's analysis finds at least 4,000 cases involving Donald Trump and his businesses. At least 70 have begun since Trump announced his candidacy about a year ago. Does that have any factor, level of importance to a jury or a judge presiding over any of these cases? Yeah. Well, a jury or a judge is not going to hear any of that. I mean, they're not going to know about all these cases. I mean, some of these are other fraud schemes like Trump University, where he had to pay $25 million uh, to settle that case before he assumed office of the presidency. Um, so, there, I, I, I mean, this guy has used 
um, litigation for years as a mm -hmm. weapon against other people, as a way of getting out of monies that he owed to other people. Um, and now he's finding himself at the other end of the stick here, um, not only with just civil litigation. And don't forget, with the civil litigation to appeal it, he's got to put up a very substantial bond, a cash bond, in order to be able to even appeal these cases. And then on top of that, you've got these criminal cases that are going to go one right after the other. What it looks like right now is that after this case in Manhattan, you're looking at the case in Washington, D.C. should be freed up. I would think the yep. Supreme Court in the next couple of days is going to deny cert and deny an appeal on the immunity issue. And then after you're finished with the case in D.C., you've got the case in Florida, and then you've got the case yeah. in Georgia. So there's no rest here. This is just going to start moving forward like a juggernaut right to the end. And during a presidential election cycle to boot, of course, there's someone on the other end of that, and that is the likely opponent Trump will face in the general election, at least at this point, President Biden. And we actually did get news related to the sitting president from the DOJ yesterday when a special counsel tasked with investigating the president's son, Hunter Biden, charged a man with lying to the FBI about he and his father's connections to Burisma, that man, Alexander Smirnov, they essentially said he falsified his statements. You, of course, prosecuted Watergate when there was questions around the behavior of a sitting president before. What does this do to the case against Joe Biden? Uh, well, there is no case against Joe Biden. I mean, this just was a trumped up case to begin with. Uh, keep in mind that the person who brought the case against this so-called informant uh, was Mr. Weiss, who was a, the U.S. attorney appointed by Donald Trump in Delaware. He's the special counsel that wound up bringing this case. Uh, so it's not like the anybody can claim that the Democrats went out and tried to undermine the evidence that the Republicans had. Uh, this was done by uh, Mr. Weiss, who is a Republican and a Trump appointee. Um, so this is pretty significant. It really kind of blows all the air out of whatever air there was in the case for impeaching Joe Biden. Um, and it just kind of shows that the Republicans really have nothing here. There obviously is the uh, indictment against Hunter Biden, which does not involve Joe Biden in any way. Um, that's a case. It's going to go forward. Um, and we'll see what happens. I know he's got defenses uh, and you know, a jury will decide that case.